Well, unlike some people who have writer's block or painter's block, I do not have that problem. I can't get enough time to paint all the things that I see because this world is just so beautiful. I went out to dinner the other night with my husband and son, and we were out by the water since we do live in Florida. And I found fascination in everything from the puddles to the ripples in the water to the way the light shined on the edge of a boat or off the wings of a herringbird. I love this painting or this picture right here and I would like to do a painting of it. I like the way the light is shining in the sky onto the tops of the boats and the top of the dock. So here I have put a sketch in and started. Sometimes the picture you draw is not necessarily clear to others, but to you, you can see here's the pole, here's a boat, here's another boat, there's a captain's, oh, I guess it's called a doghouse, I'm not sure, up, up over here, and hard to see if someone else were looking at it, but you know because you studied the photograph and you were actually out there the night before looking at the boat. I have a gator board back here, and then I have a little cardboard that I have my panel taped down to. I don't want to have to tape the edges, but I have no choice if I want to strengthen this so that it doesn't crack like the edge of the other one did. This is the other painting. You see it's just on this stuff, which I was hoping was a little bit more plasticized, but it's really very fragile paper, or brittle I should say. It's great that it's stiff and it's thin and you can easily put paint on it. It takes the paint beautifully. It doesn't erase very easily if you want to change it. It's, it's paper with some sort of fiber in it, but right here it cracked and that broke my heart. Broke my heart. I could cut my painting shorter there if I want to, or could I possibly put some gesso on it and see if I can repair it. I don't know. But, you know, it's a lot of work to just have it snap like that. But the benefit of it is you can take it and put it in the drawer with the other watercolors and the other, well, in this drawer, actually, I have my oils and they're all on just nice canvas. So look how many paintings you can fit in one little area. So all I'm doing is looking at my original photograph. I do not care what I'm painting right now. Right now I am simply painting shapes. I'm putting dark in where dark goes right now. The colors that I'm picking are not necessarily my final colors, but I know that I will have some of this undertone in the water. So I'm fine with using this color for now. I kind of like to paint a little expressionistically, so if my colors are a little dramatic, that's okay with me. Sometimes you have to put things in a little bit more dramatically than you want to, just to get the concept in, but then you can go over it and soften them. As is the case of these windows, I go in and darken them because they are all very dark. But then I go back in and I lighten them a little. Then I actually put some lights in them and then I put some colors in them. Just so you can see, it's a lively restaurant and things are happening in there. This dock has some dark greenish wood and then some lighter greenish wood. It's a faded brown dock. The sky has beautiful tones in it of blue and pink and orange and yellow and white. 
And of course, if you put a little bit of that pink and orange before you put that yellow in, you will keep your yellow from turning green. That way the blue will not touch the yellow. In advance, please pardon me because part of this audio is messed up and I don't really know why, but bear with me. Then we carry some of that color into the dock where it's shining and that's its most dramatic highlight in the painting, except for a few touches on the tips of the boats. I might put that bird in here, who knows? I thought that was kind of pretty. If I had painted a much bigger painting, I could have put in a lot more detail. But because this is small, if I try to put all that detail in, I will literally, literally have to get out my teeny tiny brushes and sit there with magnifying glasses and do a perfect job, which I'm not trying to do on this painting. I kind of want this to have a plein air look to it, so if I really love it, I will get out a really big painting and paint it over again and put all those details in it. But we'll see how the little guy comes out first. Just that little strip there on the boat is darker because it's not catching the light because of the angle. The back of the boat is a little darker. It's not getting as much light as the open side is. Even though the sun is not on this right-hand side of the boat, it is picking up more reflection than the back of the boat is. Here's where I darken the windows. Again, none of this has to be perfect. I could go in with a ruler, but I don't want that. The building is kind of all in shadow. You can barely really see it because the sun is shining on the other side of it, so it's backlit. I lighten the windows up a little bit. You can see there's a roof there, but we really can't see the details on it. There's bushes there. Get those little chimneys in. That's a Gorilla Painter mall stick that I can telescope out or close back up and throw it in my bag when I'm painting plein air. There's something I have to do to this building and I can't even explain it, but if I get it right, you will see in the end that the building makes a bend in the middle and it's not really showing properly here. So we'll see, I did this on a painting I did out in Jungle Prada and I struggled with it and I got it right and I know I can do it here as well. So that's where we're at so far. So I shut one of my lights off just so you could kind of see this better. It's not done. I keep fading out the building in the back and bringing in the reflections to try to show the light. It's very hard, but I just keep working at it. When I think it's hopeless, I refuse to give up. I'm getting that shape of the building right and it's starting to look like I want it to look. So I would say now it's final details, straightening things out a bit and trying to, I'm not trying to make a complete realistic everything on the boat exactly where they have to be. But I just want you to get the idea that there's several boats here docked up and getting hit by the sun as it goes down. If you can get that feeling of the warmth from the sun when it's all done and you think that there's a reasonable rendition of the boats in the building, then I'm happy. So I'm going to keep working. So it seems a little crazy, but I actually have the lights turned way down because I'm going to work on this with a more darkened room. I don't want detail. The photo I have is way over there. I've not really been able to clearly look at anything. 
because if I do, I will start putting in detail and I don't want it. So one of the things I'm going to start doing is getting the shape of the boat better. Kind of hard to do because I already have the dock in, but the only way to fix the edge of the boat is to adjust the dock. Push it into the boat area. Then come in with the darker color. The boat needs an angle. Otherwise it looks like a big square funny looking box. Even more. I'm going to come in with it like that and then adjust it this way. Get a little white in there. That helped quite a bit. There are things on these boats. Lots of coolers. I really need to break out my smaller brush. But I don't want to. Now I want to go in with some thicker paint. I'm putting in some of my final marks. Sometimes pure white is not as white as adding a little blue or yellow to it. So we'll have to see whether I need to do that here or not. I'm still not happy with this. I think it should come here. Not pointing down. Then go that way back. Then go that way straight.
shadows in shadows. The shadows edges are softened. Whereas the centers are sometimes darker. Okay, the only thing I want to put in here that I don't have in here right now is the tiniest little bit of on a dry brush, a very dry brush. It's always fun to take the tape off the painting, which is not something you normally would do with a regular stretched canvas, but you do it when you have free canvas or with this new fiber board that I'm trying out. You would frame this in a regular picture frame that you would put a watercolor in or even a photo in. If you wanted to put it on a floater frame, you would need to mount this onto some gator board first and then decide what you want to do about the corners of the painting, whether you want to leave them white or whether you want to fill them in. So here's the finished painting. It's just got a few little splashes of color here and there, a broom, a little net, a couple of fishing pole holders, and just little knickknacks that you don't even know for sure what they are, ropes here and there, but just authenticates the painting. Again, tiny little touches. The detail is just implied. It's not really detail a red bucket, a yellow scrub brush. Hope y'all enjoyed this, everyone. Please join me again. And remember, you can paint too.